How are you guys doing? Today is Friday, January 29th, 2021, out here in this quarantine. I'm James Sims, and then for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to do my last individual profile for January um, for the, of my first month of doing these individual profiles in this new format. And for this, uh, and for this particular episode, I'm going to do it on Jose Abreu, the elite first baseman for the Chicago White Sox, who in this most recent season where they shortened it to 60 games, he had proven that he was, if not the best, one of the best hitters or one of the best all around baseball players, one of the most impactful individual athletes, um, on, in the MLB and I'm just going to give you a little bit of context and and I'm going to give you more justification as to why I believe that going into the or just for the 2021 calendar year that Jose Abreu's name is most definitely a name that deserves praise that is a name that is deserving of praise, especially from his peers in the MLB. So if you're not familiar with him, he's originally from Cuba. He originally started playing in the Cuban League. I mean, cause that's where he played the majority of his year of his career. That's why, or that's where he played uh, for the majority of his youth, because people were questioning why he was uh, like a 27 year old rookie. That was because he was he 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 played his of the early part of his prime when he was uh, in Cuba. He became their best player. When he was age twenty three, he led the he, he led the Cuban League in home runs, and in his final year in Cuba, he would win the, or he he was he was named to the bash he was named to the nation the, the, the national team, after winning the uh, Cuban National Series Most Valuable Player. And what and and after that he decided just to test the waters just to join the MLB. He signed a sixty eight million dollar or yeah he signed a sixty eight million dollar six year contract with the Chicago White Sox. And then from then just from then his um his MLB really his MLB career could start after he was he already proven that he was a legend in a completely different league in a completely different country. Um. So in Jose Abreu's first season in the league. It, during his age 27 season in 2014, he would play 145 games uh, in a season where the Chicago White Sox are finished with the fourth best record in the AL Central. Um, but Jose Abreu that year would end up with 176 in those 145 games, which is more hits than games. He had 80 runs in his first season, 35 doubles, 36 home runs, um, which is the most home runs he'd have in a season in his entire career up, up, like up until now to date. Uh, he had 107 RBIs, which is the second most RBIs he'd have in a season. He finished with a 317 batting average. He led the American League in slugging percentage with 581, and he had a 964 OPS. He would be he would he would finish fourth in MVP voting. He was named the Rookie of the Year. He was named to his first All Star game, and he was named a Silver Slugger. And this was coming off of his last year, um, just in Cuba, being the best player out there. He just comes to America, and in his first year, he dominates and shows everybody why he's here, even though he didn't get the Chicago White Sox in the playoffs. Jose Abreu was slowly and surely becoming that guy. Um, but the next season, in 2015, he would play 154 games uh, in a season where the Chicago White Sox would win three more games than the previous season, but they would still finish fourth in the division. Um, but in that season, in those 154 games, he finished with 178 hits. The second time he finished with more hits than games. He had 88 runs, the most runs he'd have in his career up until that point. He had 30 home runs for the second time in his career. He had 101 RBIs the second time he topped 100 RBIs in his two-year career, a 290 batting average and an in a five oh or in, in an eight fifty OPS. Um he would not be named to an all star game that season, but he would still put up incredible numbers that season that would that would show off his incredible consistency. Even though he didn't make it, I mean he was still showing that he was one of the best players in baseball. So this transitions into his age twenty nine season. In twenty sixteen he would play hundred fifty nine games uh in a season where the Chicago White Sox would finish with a, with 78 wins, which is two more wins in the year prior. So the most, and those would be the most wins he'd have in a season for the Chicago White Sox ever since he's been there. But in that season, he would finish with 183 hits, the most hits he'd have in a season in those 159 games. So uh, he had 67 runs, the least amount of runs he'd have in a season. He had 25 home runs, the least amount of home runs he'd have. Um, up until that point, uh, 100 RBIs, which at that point was a career low, considering his two, his first, his 
previous two years were so good. He had a 293 batting average, which out of his first three years was this was in the middle of those three seasons. He had an 820 OPS, which is the lowest of the three seasons, and he would miss out on the All-Star game once again in his first three seasons, despite hitting at least 25 home runs, at least 100 RBIs, and finishing with all, at least 175 hits in all three seasons. Um, but of course, just I guess he just wasn't hot at the right times because he's just a player that gets better towards the second half of the season. But I digress. I continue. So this leads into Jose Abreu's age 30 season um, in 2017. And in 2017, he would play 156 games and the Chicago White Sox would win 67 games, which is the least amount of wins that he that that they'd win that he since he'd been there up until that point. Uh, Abreu would finish with 189 hits and 156 games, the most hits he'd have in a season. The, 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 the most hits he'd have. He had 95 runs, which is the most runs he'd have in a season to that point. He had 43 doubles, which is the most doubles he had at, at, the, at this point. Let's not forget, he, had, he won Rookie of the Year his first year. He had 33 home runs, which is the second most home runs he'd have. 102 RBIs, which is the second most RBIs he'd have. He had a 304 batting average, which is the second highest batting average to his rookie season. And a 906 OPS, which is the second best OPS he'd have. Um, since his rookie season, he was fin- he finished 14th in MVP voting as he led the American League in total bases for the first time in his career. He would not be named to an All Star team though, because of course the Chicago White Sox weren't. I mean, I mean they weren't playing as well. But of course he would put up an an he would put up an an uh, he put up another amazing statistical season all the way through. Where in his first four seasons, his lowest batting average was 290. The least amount of home runs he'd have would be 25. The least amount of RBIs he had would be 100. He had, he had at least 25 home runs and at least 100 RBIs in, the, in his first four seasons, and he only made one All-Star game. So, I mean, that's a, I'm, I mean at the same time, the voters vote in who they vote in, but I'm saying in this, considering he only made one All-Star game in that stretch— I should. I think you should overlook the fact that he didn't make those three times because he did have and he had incredible seasons, um, all three of those years. So I I think he's, he was probably deserving of three more All Stars that he could add to. But but whatever. But I'm just saying, even though he wasn't named, it, he's he was he still put up those incredible numbers. Um, but th- that will be right before he made the last two All Star games. So before he became a perennial All Star, that was before he became a perennial All Star. He had one. All Star game or in four All Star seasons out of his first four seasons in the league after being the best player in Cuba. So, jumping into his age 31 season in 2018, he would play 128 games uh, in a season where the Chicago White Sox would finish with the least amount of wins they'd ever have in a season with 62. They had 100 losses. Um, but Abreu would only play 128 of those games. He, him, he was injured. He would finish with 132 hits in those 128 games. The fifth season in a row, he finished with more hits than games played. He had 68 runs, which is the least amount of runs he'd have in a in, in, in a season till then. 36 double steals, and he's like even though he played 20, 30 less games than previous seasons, he had the second most doubles in a season in his career to the season prior. He had 22 home runs and 78 RBIs, both career lows, because, of course, he played less games. Uh, He finished with a 265 batting average and a 798 OPS, but he still would go on to make the All-Star game, and he would make us... He would make a second All Star appearance, and he would be given his his second Silver Slugger award in the American League. Um, and yeah, he was starting to get recognized for what he was doing, despite the fact that uh, he wasn't. It wasn't one of his best seasons, but I guess considering his his previous four seasons, he definitely deserved it at this point. This would lead into his 2019 season, his age 32 season. He would play 159 games in a season where the Chicago White Sox finished with 72 wins, which up until that point was better than the previous two years, but not better than his first three years there. Um, But Jose Abreu would end up with 180 hits for the third time in his career in those 159 games. He had 85 runs, which up until that point was the third highest in his career. Uh, He had 38 doubles, which is the second highest in his career at that point. 33 home runs um, tied for the second most with 2017. And he led the American League in RBIs for the first time in his career. He had 123 RBIs, is um, a career high for him. 
he would finish with a 284 batting average and 834 OPS. Um, as he would finish 19th in MVP voting and be named to his third All-Star game in 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 in, in his six-year career, which at, to, to this point I think he probably maybe deserved four or at least five or at least six All-Star games in his first six. But that's the last time I'm talking about what he's when, uh, the last time I mentioned just deserving. But this is what Jose Abreu has been able to put. In, this is the amount of production he's been able to do to produce in the MLB in this time. Um, and then this would lead into this most recent season into 2020, where, of course, we all know um, we all know the story um, due to the coronavirus vaccine spreading to the United States and it getting kind of out of hand. All the sports leagues had to stop. Um, baseball decided to come back um, later after they after they got the after they got the whole outbreak under control in quotes. They played 60 games in a season, but they extended the playoffs um, and in this season. Jose Abreu would play all 60 games in a season where the White Sox finished 35 and 25. The only time that they'd have a winning record since Jose Abreu has been on the team. They finished third in the AL Central and they would be and, and they would finish with the uh, seventh wild card spot and they would go on to lose to the Athletics in the AL wild card. Um, but of course, so in those 60 games in the regular season, Jose Abreu would play all 60. Lead or tying with very few players that played all of those games. He led the American League in hits. He had 76 of them um, in 60 games. He had 43 runs in those 60 games, which is incredible, which I think if, if, if you put up, if you calculated it out to 160 games, he would have destroyed his other years. Um, he was on pace to shatter his other run records. He had 15 doubles in those 60 games. So he would have been on pace to shatter his doubles. Uh, he finished with 19 home runs, which was the which is second in the American League to uh, uh, to Luke Voigt, the first baseman of the New York Yankees. But Jose Abreu would event, but he would still lead the American League in RBIs. He had 60 RBIs in 60 games. That's okay. That that's a 162 RBI on the on pace. Like that, that he's on pace to get 162 RBIs. That's one RBI for every game he played, which is virtually unheard of. Uh, he finished with a 317 batting average. He led the American League with a 617 slugging percentage. He had a 987 OPS. He led the American League in total bases for the second time in his career and he would be named he would be named a silver slugger for the third time in his career and he would be named the american league mvp for the first time ever in his career um after helping lead the chicago white Sox for the first to, or to the playoffs for the first time since he'd been there and by a lot of metrics i think just around the board he had probably been the, he, he was the best all-around hitter in the american league the most complete hitter in terms of what in terms of production that he was able to bring to the team um and with that like i said the white Sox were losing the first round but jose abreu was starting to just starting no, just just to try to show the rest of the league his impact what he's been able what he's been doing in that city even though the white Sox haven't been making the playoffs jose abreu has been that one in um, that that one, he he's been that one uh, model of consistency. Every single season he's been in the league, he's had more hits than games played, and uh, and his power stats are pretty consistent. When you look at them, it's just no. I I think when you put all of it together, you come to see that he's a very he he's a very amazing player. He makes great contact. He knows how to keep players in the game, and let's not forget he what like he does have star power. He was the best. He was the MVP in Cuba before he came to the U.S. The fact that he was able to do it in two different leagues, um, I mean the the the, the difficulty and to do it with with all the with all the COVID protocols to stay COVID free, um, and to travel with the team and make sure that nothing crazy happened. Um, just I tip my hat off to Jose Abreu, who, as of right now, is. No, I, I, as of right now, is turning 34 years old and going into 2021. I still think he's one of the premier elite baseball players that you need to keep your eye on. If you ever get a, if you ever get a chance to watch him, he is wearing number 79 for the Chicago White Sox, a very nice up and coming core. And if they make the playoffs, if they make a if they make a run really deep this year in the next couple of years. Just expect to see Jose Abreu. For, just expect him to see. Uh, expect to see him producing a lot of uh, a lot of that momentum and a lot of the runs scored in their not just in their 
possible dominance of the division. We'll see how that all comes about, but I will say that going into 2021, Jose Abreu is definitely a player to watch if you plan on watching baseball this season. Thank you once again for listening to all 15, 16 minutes of my piece. I hope all is well, and my next individual profiles will come on February 2nd when I do Jeff Okuda of the cornerback of the Detroit Lions and Harrison Smith, the safety of the Minnesota Vikings. Thanks once again. I hope all is well, and I will catch you tomorrow with new episodes then. Peace out, and um, I'll see you then.